good afternoon. Um, we uh, are going to talk today about task nine, okay? But we'll recap a little bit on task eight as well because task eight feeds nicely into task nine because we started to look at color. So um, what we had last time was the color wheel, okay? So um, the color wheel is made up of all of the hues. So today what we're going to talk about is how to put these hues, how to work with them so that we can create a tonal drawing but in colour this time. So all the way through up until now we've been looking at uh, different tones and shades and how to put those into our artwork but we started with just graphite with a pencil because what that allows you to do is to take away all the colour is to understand um, how three dimensional drawings work and how to make them look more three-dimensional is all about the tone that you use from l the lightest to the darkest. Now that changes not um, in terms of you need the whole range when you're using colour but there's a lot more to think about with colour which is why we strip the colour away and we start with using graphite because then you can really look at an object and the tonal values. So we're going to start applying that now to colour. So. Let's begin by just recapping on task eight, which was this colour wheel. So you've got all of these colours, which are known as hues. Okay, and all the colours are represented in this colour wheel. So we talked about last time how to go about um, producing artwork that has different colour schemes and, and the relationship that these colours have with each other. Now some of the obvious ones is on this side of the colour wheel, we, we see these as warm colours, so you've got red to yellow, they're kind of warm colours aren't they? And if you look on this side they're cool colours. So you can create colour schemes where your artwork produces a warm kind of feeling to the painting by just sticking to these colours. So if you're picking objects to draw, you can have objects that are these tones or, or hues, or you could have these and make more of a cool um, atmosphere with your painting. Or we can mix it up, maybe you prefer a bit of vibrancy. So when you look at a colour that's directly opposite each other, we spoke about last time that they are known as complementary colours, because when you work with a colour that's directly opposite, you kind of get a mixture of both, don't you? You've got warm and cool, and at the same time they look the brightest when they are next to each other. So red will look very red when you put it next to um, uh, green for example okay so red and green together creates the, the the biggest contrast that you can create so that's worth knowing just so when you're doing a composition if you want it to be really vibrant and you want a lot of movement in your artwork you'll see a lot of artists do that we talked about Van Gogh and a couple of others that do that purposefully to create more of an impact in their artwork so you could do that with any of these colors so whenever you see a hue and you're trying to think well what is going to complement it what is going to look the best in a clashing kind of way then you want to try and incorporate the color that's directly opposite in the color wheel so this is really useful to have with you when you're thinking of a composition and when you're putting your colors together okay so last time we talked about that we talked about the color wheel the analogous colors that are close to each other the complementary colors that are opposite warm and cool colors and now we're going to try and put that into our artwork so when um, you create the different values now of the different hues, the obvious way is obviously to add white and then gradually, so you can see I've done this with yellow, um, and then add black to get the darkest, the, darkest, um, the darkest shade. So when you add black, that's known as a shade, and when you add white, that's a tint. So this is a tint of yellow, this is a shade of yellow. Okay, so you've got all the different ones and you could paint or, or colour with pastels or anything um, using this as your tonal scale. Whereas before when we just did graphite, we obviously went from the harder pencils to the softer pencils to get it light to dark. Okay, so now we've got to work that out with the colours that we're using in our painting. So um, that's the, the way that a lot of people do it. But you don't have to do it that way because there's lots of other things that you could do. So um, you could also create tones. You've probably heard the, the term tone. Now what that means is when you add grey 
and different shades of grey. So they create tones with a colour. So what you could also do with yellow is add different greys, okay, to create the different um, tonal scale as well. You could do it that way. So there is so much to experiment with because this is just yellow and yet you've got all the hues that you need to experiment with. So you've got the full range of colour tonal scales and that's the start of task nine. Okay, so task nine is to take each of your hues or all the colours that you use regularly at least and create all the different values from light to dark. Okay, so that you've got you've got all of that for reference. So when you're trying to think, how can I make this uh, object look darker with its shadow, and how can I get the highlight? Then you need to be able to look quickly at your tonal scales. Now, um, you can also there's there's lots there's more ways as well, which I'll go through now. So um, when you create your first still life in um, in paint or pastels, you can use anything just to experience colour to begin with. I'd experiment as well with lots of different media because your your colour scales will obviously vary with the media that you're using. So your your me your tonal scales is not going to obviously be the same for all the different media. So again, you've got all those experiments that you can do with the different uh, media. So you can do it with oil pastels. You could do it with watercolours, acrylics. They're all going to act differently. So you've got a big lot of experimenting to do to really um, reinforce some knowledge and understanding of your colour before you start doing some still life. So with this one, you can see that the colours that I was using for going from light to dark were kind of um, using the white tint, but also bringing in other colours. So with yellow, if you look on the colour wheel, obviously getting dark or appears to get darker, you've got orange and you've got reds, so you can bring that into it. But also complementary colours, which I'll talk about shortly in more detail, but that is when you're doing the tonal scale, you can have your yellow to violet and have that as your tonal scale. So on, say, a banana, I was putting in elements of violet to get these darker tones. So it wasn't black, okay? So it's about um, experiencing and experimenting with as many different ways you can add your tones, okay, to create your different shapes. So for example, so let's have a go. So tonal scale, so the start of nine, I've made a start here. So you can see all I did was doing tints down to shades, okay? So I've got white going down to black and all the bits in between for each of the colors. And you can keep going so you've got all of them from your um, color wheel. But what we were just uh, talking about is how we can get from light to dark in other ways that isn't just um, using white and using black, which is what most people do, which is fine. But you might want to add a bit more variety into your artwork and experiment with colour a bit more. So for example, if we start with some yellow, so if I start with some yellow, so if that's going to be my lightest highlight in my painting, Okay, then I can start getting slightly darker, but this time instead of using black, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick to the colour wheel and make my way around it. So I'm going to kind of blend in. So I'm kind of adding red, tiny little bits as we go. And if I just, I can blend these in. So I get that gradual tone, because that's what I want to do on my drawing. So I want to go yellow to orange, and we can just keep getting a bit darker and darker by literally just adding red. Okay? And that will just make you think, next time you're doing a lemon or you are drawing, say a banana, instead of trying to add black to make your colour darker, you can just look on the colour wheel and get darker that way. So you can see I'm doing a tonal scale this time, but using um, yellows to reds. So we can keep going on the colour scale, can't we? And we can even start incorporating a bit of blues and things like that to get even darker. Now you'd have to be quite brave when you are painting, say, a 
banana to add blue when you are doing your tone but it works it goes from light to dark you see so that's another way of doing a tonal scale um, the last one that I mentioned because these are the harmonious the analogous colors on the curve because they're all next to each other okay so we can keep going through the rainbow obviously but there are there are other ways so what about the complementary colors this time so we can start we can start again with yellow if we think this time to get darker I'm going to be a bit bold and I'm going to add violet bit by bit you can blend this in afterwards I'm using gouache paint um, which is a bit of a mixture I think I mentioned it before a bit of a mixture of acrylic and watercolors so again, doing this, you'll get to understand your media a bit more too. If you're doing watercolours, you can add more water to make it lighter and darker, for example. Or, um, yeah, there's lots of, there's lots of ways. Um, so it does depend on what media you're using. If we see, we've got violet down here. So you can see that this is another way. And this is how I kind of added some tone to my banana be quite brave but I was adding violet in there so I, I like painting this way everyone's going to find their own style aren't they and their own way of doing things but this just gives you more options because a lot of people when they start painting they need light, they'll add white, they need dark, they'll add black but it's not always necessary you can do tonal scales in many different ways so as I say task 9 is to explore this all your different tonal scales, all your values, everything you can do with colour all the different colours you can mix together all the tints, the shades, the tones, you could do all of that variety again but with um, greys so the problem with adding white, really, the only thing is that it makes the colour, the hue, less intense. It reduces the intensity of the colour. And when that happens, it could have a detrimental effect on your painting. You might want it to be really vibrant in the end. And so the intensity will kind of be washed away if you've got white in there. That might be the effect you want. But if you haven't got all the different options, then... Um, it's worth experimenting isn't it and then you've got the choice so for example I coloured I drew a bit of a pepper I've got it here so I drew a yellow pepper and I've just there's lots of tone I love doing peppers because you've got obviously all the different um, curves that go into one another lots of different shadows and things that are created to make it even harder I would cut fruit and veg in half as well imagine cutting this in half and the amount of depth you would then have to create in your drawing too so there's lots to think about isn't there when you're doing fruit and veg there's lots of things that you can do and because of the bright colors flowers is a good one too uh, shells because of the form if you're still testing out your observation skills and you want to really stretch yourself in that way then think you could get a really complex shell and you could really observe the form on that um, so what I'm going to do, I've put my base colour down, obviously yellow, and now I want to add tone, um, or the tonal scale I should say. So I want to add a shade, I want to go darker, but I'm not going to add a shade because I'm not going to add black. So in here would be a shadow, so I'm just going to put in some violet, okay, can you see me doing this? Because these work a bit like watercolours, we can help them along with some blending. So it takes a, a long time, doesn't it? You've got to really um, blend these colours together. It's so hot, it's drying so, so quickly as well. Let's get much more water in here. So what this will show is just how you can how you can blend your tones. I haven't stretched my paper as you can see I'm just in a pad here so it will start to go a bit wrinkly. 
but you get the idea. Now obviously I want some bright highlights on the end of there, so you can bring in white with paint like this. When you're doing watercolours you might mask it out, obviously, so you keep the white of your paper, especially if you're using transparent um, colours like through watercolours. So again, it does all depend on what you are, the media you are using. But just like, just like when you are, just like when you are doing your um, tonal drawings in pencil, it's all about getting the value, getting the lightest, getting the darkest tones in there, and just working out the best way to do that. Um, So yeah, this is how I like to. I like to use the complementary colours, but again, that might not be your style. This is not the the only way to do it. It's just a way. And you can see it's starting to look a bit more three dimensional. The more that I put, can you see? The more that I put the tones and the values into it. So you just have to keep layering it up. Okay, but as you can see, I haven't used black. It's not necessary. You can just look at your colour wheel and discover other colours. I mean, we could have violet was an extreme one, but obviously it's not too far from red, is it? So red, the harmonious colour next to the yellow on the colour wheel might be your preferred choice. And then you can always get darker and darker after that. And with watercolours as well, as well with gouache, you can take in, if you want a really bright highlight somewhere, you can take in a bit of a damp brush afterwards and you can lift. You probably all recognise that. You can lift off. So we can wet it. You can lift it off with a damp brush. You can actually get a lifting brush. Or you can just get some kitchen towel and you can dab the paint away. Okay, And it will lighten. It will lighten underneath. Okay, so you can do it that way too. So you can lift it back off as well. You can do it that way. Um, you could even experiment with coloured paper, especially if you're doing pastels and things. Well, I'll do a lesson on that in a few days where we look at different media and colour as well. But I thought I'd show gouache. It's a bit of a mixture then between water and acrylics. The shadows are a bit extreme and here. But you can see, you can see, can't you, how the tonal scales is helping to give that 3D effect. So just like we did weeks ago when we started just using graphite, the first thing we did was to get the tonal scale of our graphite from light to dark. Task 9 um, is to do the same, but with all your different colours. So it's time consuming. It's worth the time that you invest in it to make sure that... Um, you've got all of those that you can then refer to because depend, depending on the object you're drawing you're going to need to look at how that colour might work with its shades and its tints um, is there anything else? I don't think so Task 8 was the colour wheel so I think most of you might have uh, should have um, had a go at the colour wheel understood a bit of colour theory and then there was a second part to Task 8 which was to do a bowl of fruit and with that, you were more thinking about the colour wheel and the objects that you were placing together. This time we're talking more about um, the values, the values and how you can actually create all the different tones within your shapes to make it really three-dimensional. So that's it for today, all right? So that's um, all on the blog, okay? There's lots more explanation on the blog. There's lots more examples. There's a resource to go through to give you ideas of what you could do for your still life. So once you've done all your values, what sort of composition you could create. Um, so by the end of task nine, you should have um, all your values and a still life um, in colour, okay? In your chosen media. Uh, so it's up to you what you use and then we'll move on from there. So I'll see you next time. We'll do some more media experiments. I'll show you some more things to do with oil pastels as well and things like that, just so you can have a wide uh, range of media that you can choose from. So yeah, upload your work as always to the Facebook page and I'll give you some feedback. And until next time, bye.